right, as you can see here, I have the factory Honda 1000 stereo removed from the CRX and taken apart here on the bench. And the reason uh, being is I'm going to be doing something similar to what Jordan Distributors is doing, uh, except instead of a, just a quick plug and play from their product, I'm going to be actually soldering in a Bluetooth module into my factory stereo to hopefully uh, allow this stereo to be functional with the uh, stereo AM, FM uh, inputs as well as whenever you put a blank tape in, I'll be able to connect to Bluetooth and play music over uh, the Bluetooth uh, connection. So let's give this a shot. Um, I actually bought a Bluetooth module off of Amazon here. I'll link this down in the description below in case you want to pick this up and give this a try. This does require a little bit of soldering and uh, we're going to get into that in just a second. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, here's the Bluetooth module we're going to be using. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just got to get 12 volts, anywhere from 5 to 12 volts of power on here. Uh, I'm going to be getting, using 12 volts off of the actual uh, stereo itself. I'll have to find a power source on here to, to solder my wires to. I'm going to be using this wiring harness that came with the Bluetooth module, and I'll be plugging it into the output uh, slot here. It actually has a, a left channel, a right channel, and then the ground for that signal. So I'll have to cut the end of this uh, connector off here and actually wire it to the tape deck. So let's go ahead and jump to the tape deck and uh, find the uh, channels we need on there. All right, here is the tape deck out of the car here. Uh, you might be able to read this. Here's the left channel for the audio, the right channel for the audio. There's a P ground, that's for the power. And then there's a, a couple more here, it's hard to read. So what I'm gonna have to do is pull this chip off of here and um, cut these wires that go to these terminals here. That way I can solder onto those terminals as well. All right, so with the audio signal soldered on there, uh, the next thing I need to do is find a power source. I was gonna use something on the tape deck itself, but I actually, I think I'm gonna use the main uh, harness that plugs into the back of the stereo. I don't want to use the battery and the ground here because that's a constant 12 volt source and that will drain the battery with this uh, Bluetooth module powered up. So what I want is the ground and the actual accessory. So that will come on when you turn the key on, which is what we want. So I'm gonna do a ground and accessory. I'm gonna run my wire up through this hole here and then run it across uh, and solder onto these terminals right here. cord is coming up through the circuit board. I have flipped this over. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the tape deck uh, back in place here. What I've got here is a cheap cassette adapter picked up off Amazon. This is actually just like a $7 one with the auxiliary plug input. We're not going to be needing this plug. I'll probably remove this. But the reason I have to have this is because the Honda 1000 stereo is an auto switching input. Meaning it won't play the tape 
uh, input until a tape is actually inserted and playing. So we're going to have to have this inserted. It'll switch it over to the tape input, which will allow our Bluetooth to play. Now, the Honda 1000 stereo also has an auto reversing feature. And what that means is if it doesn't detect that the tape is turning, uh, it thinks it's reached the end of the tape and it will switch the uh, tape head to the other side. Now, without opening this up and removing one of these gears like I'm going to show you, it will think that it's constantly at the end of the tape and it just keeps switching the tape head. And after two or three tries, it will actually eject the tape. So I've already opened this up um, and I'll show you which one I have to remove. You open it up and there's a bunch of gears in here. And really this right here is the key one, the one that actually uh, lets the tape deck know that it's turning. So to function properly, I've, I've seen that you actually have to remove the giant gear here in the middle here. Now with the center gear removed, I'm also going to remove this wire here because we definitely do not need that. I'm going to go ahead and just snip it off. Even without the tape inserted, we should be able to uh, see our Bluetooth module because it is powered up. So there it is, Drock BT. So I'm going to go ahead and try to connect. It shows connected. Here's our stereo volume. So we should be able to put the tape in and it switched to the Bluetooth input. All right. Tape is in and playing. We should be able to play some audio here. There it is. What's good about this is you can adjust the volume on the head unit and on the phone. You can also do the uh, tone adjustment. So now that we know that it works, we'll pop this out. Eject, back to the stereo. We'll get this thing put back together and uh, installed properly. Radio is back installed and bolted in. This is the final test. Our Bluetooth is connected. Put our tape in. Start our audio. Bluetooth module installed. Uh, it really wasn't too bad. If you know your way around a little bit of wiring and some diagrams and a soldering iron, you could definitely take care of this on your own. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description below for the module that I bought. It is uh, very small and it works really well from what I've seen so far. Um, I'm really glad that I've got a functioning OEM stereo with Bluetooth capabilities. I know you can buy the tape adapters with the Bluetooth functionality, but it really doesn't play well against the tape head that's in the car. So the fact that I can uh, bypass that and go directly to the input is definitely a plus and it sounds a lot better. So I definitely recommend doing that if you can do that and uh, you'll have a really nice uh, end result. So thanks for sticking around and I appreciate you watching it. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.